Well, 2020 has, of course, been a very, very unusual year for us here at F4. Uh, obviously, we got the season started at the media day way back in March, which seems a very long time ago now. But then the start of the season, which should have been early April, was delayed. It's been rescheduled for August start, and we are right in the middle of that now. So it's been a very frantic schedule. We've seen four out of five weekends having races through August. The teams have had to really learn to work in a fairly different way this year. Uh, there are the obvious things that we can see visually, like everyone having to wear face masks, everybody washing their hands every few minutes to make sure we keep the hygiene in this paddock exactly as it should be. Beyond that, there are also other difficult rules for them to fit around, such as limitations on the number of mechanics that can work together under an awning, such as the number of people we can have in the pit lane, the number of people we can have on the pit wall. So behind the scenes, there's been quite a lot of differences. You've also got to remember then we've got a big infrastructure of support to the championship in terms of Miguel with their part support for the cars, Hankook, our tyre partners, managing to get enough tyres to the right circuits at the right times, Neil Brown Engineering for their engine support, keeping on top of these engines and making sure the equivalency is exactly perfect, where normally we have three or four week gaps to do that. These things are having to be done in about three days at a time. And of course, the teams have to be very, very careful to make sure they maintain the social distancing inside their awnings at all times when they're working on the cars. It may sound easy, but when the pressure's on, they've got a lot to keep thinking about to stay safe. The COVID time has been certainly a challenge ensuring that we're keeping the spatial side of things has been uh, probably the biggest issue because you're obviously working in close quarters with e each of your uh, members of staff and as per race meeting to race meeting it's logistic wise it's just a massive operation to remove nine to ten guys per race meeting plus parents and drivers and hotels and, and you have the issue with hotels where you've got um, no restaurants really operating you've got to sort your staff out to make sure they get fed and so on and this just continues on it's just a nightmare plus it's been very tiring very tiring but but at the end of the day we're racing so so that's the main thing we're racing so exhaustion you know for, for, on our side we kind of it's long days here um on the race weekend you, you don't have much sleep and then and to go back to back to back so it's, it's been great but uh everyone's loved it but at the same time i think we'll be uh Excited to have a little extra line on, on Monday after, after this weekend, that's for sure. Because everything's so bunched together, if, if you crash or you damage the car in any way, um, then obviously you're putting strain on the team because they haven't got the time to turn things around. I mean, other than that, it, it's, it's quite nice to have back-to-back -back weekends because it's just constant seat time um, and it's a lot of fun. I think it's been a lot, like, very rushed and very... It's been hard to prepare because, you know, you're... As soon as you get back on the Monday, you're you're going down to the to the workshop and preparing on the sim straight after the race weekend. So it's it's really full on, and it's it's not left me much spare time. But it's it's then again, it's super fun, just 24/7 racing. So it makes it hard to to train like to your full potential sometimes because you've obviously got to you've got to put the workload down a little bit before race meetings so you don't uh, overload yourself. Hydration is key. If your energy is a little bit low going into one of them races and you make a, uh, a little mistake, it can soon turn into a uh, big consequences, especially in such expensive and awesome cars as the uh, British Formula 4. So, yeah, massive challenges, but um, we've overcome them all so far and sort of looking forward to getting out there. We were able to draft some guys in from the other side of the team, so it's enabled us to, to really get through what is some seriously challenging uh, um, days that we've had we've had especially you know re we've reshelled the car in uh in a matter of two days at one point um whereas n under normal circumstances you've normally got two weeks to do that i think for us as a team we were very fortunate because we'd done our testing before the before we got hit down we went into lockdown but i wasn't quite happy with the way we were performing so i think we had some time where we could go away reset everything again and come back with a different approach and we had a couple of issues that we had time to work on. Let's face it, three or four months ago, you probably thought we were going in the other season. So, so we were very fortunate that the guys at F4 have got it all together and Toka put the whole package together. It's, I think the hardest thing is no spectators. I think that is the one thing that I think that these miss a bit. You know, we miss the interaction with all the spectators here and the autograph signing and things like that. Just over time, over the, as, the, as the weeks have gone by, it's just... Uh... It's just keeping the, the efforts and, and, and you know not making any mistakes down to due to tiredness and, and, and try and, and, and rest when they can and, and, and get back out and, and, and get on the track and keep them motivated. But the motivation's been there. Um, 
yeah, we've all been motivated. I think the results helped us out, you know, getting three wins at Alton, um, kept, kept, made, the, made the boys happy and, and, and I think made them feel like the, the lack of sleep is justified. I don't really feel it's 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 been detrimental to, to the drivers at all, really. Um, I think, if anything, we've had probably more time on circuit due to the COVID-19 delay and everything, it meant that we were able to do more testing. I, I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. You know, this short, sort of short, condensed season, all the highs and lows into one. You know, you, you have a one bad weekend and you, you can be straight back out there the next. And um, it's it's cool to be able to come back from stuff like that, and especially when I'm on a when I'm on a roll like this. It's it's cool to be able to carry on that momentum, um, especially for myself, and carry on leading the championship. Yeah, because because of coronavirus, I I doubled my testing time, so that left me with you know double the laps and double double the time of the team to to build that relationship. How it is now, and and the fact that the British Touring Car Championship managed to pull a calendar together in the first place was was quite incredible. So. Just grateful to be to be racing.